good to be saved. Amen. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes. Amen. Thank God for being called out of darkness oh, and into his marvelous light. Amen. We bless the Lord today. Amen. Um, we're going to turn again. Not to our bulletin, but in our Bible. But we're going to turn to Luke 17, 32. Uh, because that's going to form the basis of the message today. Amen. We had it in our, as our confession for the week. Amen. If you forgot it, I'll remind you. It simply said, remember... Lot's wife. Yes. Amen. That's going to be our foundation for today's message. Amen. Amen. Remember Lot's wife. And those are the words of Jesus. Amen. As he uh, was uh, speaking about the coming of the kingdom of God. He got to a particular point uh, where he simply gave a warning. And it's just three words, right? Remember Lot's wife. You know, sometimes, you know, uh, there are people who make a whole lot of noise and they use a whole lot of words and uh, do a whole lot of gesturing. Um, but one of the things I learned, amen, if you, if you grew up in the city or in the city or in the hood, so to speak, you understood after a while that the guy with the big mouth was not somebody you really worried about. Right. Mm -hmm. The guy who did a whole lot of talking wasn't the guy you was worried about. It was the guy who barely raised his voice and told you, you better walk on. Mm -hmm. You knew. Yeah. <laughs> There's just something about... The, you know, those words that are just delivered in a certain way. It's not a whole lot, not a whole lot of emotion, not a whole lot of words, not a whole lot of syllables, not a whole lot of gestures, but there's something behind those words where it just grabs your attention and you know you better listen to this. That's the sense I get when I read Remember Lot's Wife. Yeah. There's not a whole lot there. There's not a whole lot of words, but and it's, and it's all set apart by itself. It kind of even looks strange in your Bible, doesn't it? When you see verse 31, and it has like four or five lines, and you see verse 33 has like three lines, and right there, verse 32, this guy did, remember Lot's wife. Yes. <laughs> it's simple, but it's powerful, and we want to take a look at it today as, as we consider uh, uh, the message, and, and, and the message from God is, don't turn back now. Amen. Amen. Don't turn back now. Amen. And, and, and I believe God is, is wanting to speak unto us because how many of you know that, 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 that discouragement is a spirit? Mm. And I believe that, that there's, the devil walks around trying to discourage us because he knows that if he can discourage us, that that's one step closer to defeating us. Amen. Uh, and, and, and things can certainly get hard and we can get a little bit weary and a little bit tired and, and we can become discontented sometimes. And, 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 you know, you just sometimes just get discouraged to the point where you feel like maybe giving up. But there's something even worse than giving up, I believe, and that is turning back to, to what you used to do and, 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 and where you came from, not physically so much, but spiritually, right? And God is saying, as much as you may be discouraged right now in your spirit, as much as you may be beat up a little bit right now, now is not the time to turn back. Yes. Amen. That, that yes. we have to keep pressing forward with God. Amen. We, we have to keep pressing forward. We have to keep moving forward. In, in the midst of the adversity, we have to have a determination in our spirit that says, come what may, I'm still going on with God. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that's why we hear Jesus saying unto us today, remember Lot's wife. Why? Because now is not the time 
for us to turn back, look back, or linger in the things that God has brought us from. Amen? So we want to take a, a little closer look at this, but first let's pray. Amen? Let's pray over the word today, yes. and then we'll get into the word a bit more. Father, we bless you and we thank, thank you. you we thank you, God, for your spirit. We yes, thank God. you, God, that you love us with an unconditional love. We thank you, God, that you are mindful of us even right now. Yes, and Father, we come and we set ourselves at your feet, God, and we incline our ear into your voice and we have a simple prayer, God, that you will speak unto our hearts, yes. that you will speak into our lives, that you will speak into our situations, oh God. Breathe into us, O oh yes. God, the breath of life, O oh God. Revive us again, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus name Christ. Of Jesus. Open our eyes that we may see what you are doing in our lives and in the earth. And touch our hearts that we may receive from you, O oh God, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, we thank you right now for your word. Your word, O oh God. Uh, which can save our very souls. Yes. And Father, we thank you, God, that as you speak, we shall hear, and as we hear, we shall do. Yes. And as we do, we shall be blessed in our deeds. And so, Father, yes. we give you the praise as we lift you up now. I uh, humble myself under your hand that you may be exalted and blessed in the sight of your people. We just thank you for what you're going to do in the place. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. 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 Remember Lot's wife. Amen. God telling us, don't turn back now. Now, Jesus was here and he was teaching about the coming of the kingdom. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and he was speaking about his ultimate return for the church. How many of you know there's going to come a time where, where Jesus is going to come back? Oh, yes. yes. Amen. Yeah. And he's coming back for, for the church. And, and not everybody's going. How many of you know that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not everybody is going to be going at that time. That's why Jesus said in another place, what? Be ye also ready. Amen. Because no one knows the hour. No one knows the day. No one knows the time that the Lord is coming back. But this much we know. The Lord is coming back. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, Jesus was giving this, this, this message, amen, because the Pharisees were demanding when to know when the kingdom of God was going to come. And Jesus said, don't worry about looking around for the kingdom of God so much. He said, the kingdom of God is not here or there, but it's in you. It's among you. In other words, Jesus was saying that the, the age of the kingdom of God had already come. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist and Jesus himself had ushered in the kingdom. But Jesus also let them know, there's going to come a time where I'm coming back. Yes. yes. For those who have put their faith and their trust mm -hmm. in me. And then he says something to them interesting. He's telling them, he said, listen, that, that, that when I come back, it's a time of deliverance, but it's also going to be a time of judgment. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I'm going to deliver my people out of this. Oh, glory to God. I was talking to somebody this week. We were just saying, mm -hmm. amen, that unbelievers who think they don't like you because you're a believer, they, don't, they really don't know what they're doing. Because, see, once we're out of here, all hell won't break loose. Oh uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and part of the reason why it hasn't broken loose now is because we're here. That's it. So they think they hate doing us, but we actually are holding back some stuff because of the light of God that's within us. But, oh, when that time comes and he takes everybody out, then all hell won't break loose. It's going to be a time of deliverance. It's going to be a time of judgment. And Jesus said that he then started talking about the days of Noah and the days of Lot. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, he said, it's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah and the days of Lot. People just went about their daily business, right? Wow. He, you know, they were eating and drinking. They were getting married and having parties. They were buying and selling. Mm -hmm. they, they, they were farming and building houses. They were just doing the normal things that we do every day. They were just living life. Mm -hmm. And how many of you know, the flood came in Noah's day, amen? Yeah. It just came. There was no announcement on the news. There was nobody that was tweeting it out. There was nothing. It just came. Yeah. Yeah. And in the day of Lot, the same thing. Amen. None of the people in Sodom and Gomorrah knew what was about to hit them. Yes. It just came. And Jesus said that's how it's going to be when he comes back. Mm -hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's just going to be doing their own thing. You know, you could just, you're just going to be doing your own thing. You might be in school. You might be at work. You might be at the hairdresser. You might be mowing your lawn. You're just going to be doing normal things. And Jesus is going to come back. My God. He says it's going to be business as usual. But here's the thing. He said, but many people are going to be indifferent toward God. Right? Because they have heard the word, but they really don't care about it. And see, those are the ones who are going to find themselves surprised at Christ's return. We're not going to be surprised. We're going to be overjoyed. Amen? We're not going to be looking, oh, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because we're going to understand something. He's come back for me. But those who haven't accepted Christ, they now are faced with this, 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 this terrible feeling of, I had an opportunity. And now I'm, I'm caught short, I'm caught surprised by Christ's return. And Jesus said on that day, he said, if you're on the housetop, don't you go into your house and try to pack up your stuff. Uh -huh. He said, if you're in the field, don't you run back home. In other words, what he was saying is that when I come, that's not the time for you to go searching around and clinging for things of this life. Your possessions don't matter, right? All these things that you accumulated in this life, they don't matter. And after he said that, he said, don't go back, don't look back, don't run into your house. And then he said this, remember Lot's wife. And there's three words that capture your attention. You say, Remember Lot's wife for what? We know the story of Lot's wife, right? Anybody been in Sunday school for even a couple of minutes, amen? You know about Lot's wife. Don't know a name. Mm -hmm. She just Lot's wife. But we do know Lot, amen? And, and, and Lot was the nephew of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And and. And, and we meet Lot in Genesis chapter 12 when God said to Abram, right, come out from your, uh, from your kindred and from your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. And, 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 and the scripture tells us that, that, that when Abram left, he took Sarah, his wife, and he took Lot, his brother's son. And then we learn that at, at a certain point in time, strife developed between the shepherds of Lot and the shepherds of, of Abraham because they both had so much cattle and the land couldn't sustain both of them. Mm. And how many of you know, if you had cattle back in these days, that means you were a rich man. Oh, yeah. so, so Abraham and Lot were rich. And so the cattlemen were of both Abraham and Lot were fighting, and Abraham, being the wiser head, said, listen, let's not fight this way. He said, he said, look, look at the whole land and pick out what you want. Mm -hmm. How many of you know Abraham could have pulled rank and said, look, I'm, I'm your uncle. I brought you with me. God speaks to me. So I'm going to pick what I want, and then you can have the rest. How many of you know a lot of us would have done that? Right. <laughs> but, but those who follow God, I'm telling you, they have a grace upon them that sometimes is mistaken by people who don't understand as weakness. But it's not a weakness, it's grace. It's not a weakness, it's trust. It's saying, I don't care what you pick, God's still going to bless me with whatever is left. So go ahead and pick whatever you want, Lot. I'll be fine with whatever it is that's left because God's blessing is on my life. See, people who walk in grace don't sweat stuff. You can go ahead in front of me. Oh, you think you cut me in the line? Go ahead. No, no, you can go ahead. In fact, you can bring your neighbor too. Go ahead. I, I, I'm still going to get out of here after you. Watch this. Next, please. And you go over to the other register that opens up by the way, right? People who are, who are walking in grace, they don't sweat stuff. Wow. They don't walk around fretting over things. Why? Because they have a trust that, that God is with me. Yes. Amen. God is in my life. So he told him, he told Lot, go pick whatever you want. And, and, and so Lot starts looking, amen. And, and, and he looks and he looks and, 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 and he looks towards Sodom and Gomorrah. 
And he sees that it's, it looks well watered and it was lush and it was green. And he said, I'm going, I'm going that way. Amen. And the scripture said that he 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 goes and, and, and he pitched his tent toward Solomon. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but, but it sounds like he moved toward it, but maybe stayed a little bit outside the skirts of the city. I don't know, but it said he pitched his tent toward Sodom. Mm -hmm. And then it let us know that even though Sodom was, it was well watered and it was green and everything else, it said there that the men were exceedingly wicked. How many of you know that just because something looks nice right. don't mean it is nice? Yes. Yes, sir. Just because somebody dressed the part doesn't mean that they don't have some things going on in their heart. It's people and opportunities and, 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 and situations that sometimes we just read from the outside and we draw conclusions from it. But everything is not what it seems. Yes. Yes. And so as, 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 as Lot looked, he said, this looks nice. It's green. It's well watered. It's lush. But the men were exceedingly wicked. And, and, and perhaps Lot knew a little bit about it because he pitched his tent towards Sodom. Yes. He, he, it's not like he just camped right in the middle of the city. He just kind of went toward it. Mm -hmm. But how many of you know there's a danger in going toward wicked? There's a danger in getting in the vicinity of ungodliness, amen? Of getting in the vicinity of things that God disapproves of and thinking somehow you're going to remain okay. And then certainly we see that after a while, Lot didn't stay on the outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Lot, later on we find out that Lot was in the city. Yes. But before we get there, amen, there, there was also a battle of four kings against five. You remember that? Yeah. The four kings against five. And they took, they took everything in Sodom and Gomorrah, including Lot and all his possessions. And word came back to Abram, and Abram got his house, uh, amen, and his soldiers in order. And he went, he rescued Lot. Mm -hmm. But then in time, uh, God heard the cries of Sodom and Gomorrah. Because the cities were so wicked. And three angels visited Abraham. You remember that? Mm -hmm. One of them actually was the pre-incarnate Christ. Amen. Was the Lord. And the other two were angels. And they visited Abraham. And at the conclusion of the, of the visit, the two angels, they're, they're about to leave. And the, and, and the Lord is with them. And he said, should we hold back from Abraham what we are about to do? Wow. <laughs> hmm. And he said, we're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And the other two angels, the two angels went toward the city. Because they're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord stayed there with Abram. And Abram started to plead with the Lord. He said, he said, he said, Lord, he said, he said, how are you going to destroy the city? What about the righteous people that are there? He said, Lord, and if there are 50 people, 50 righteous people there, will you save the city? And the Lord said, for 50 righteous, I'll save the city. Uh-huh. Thank you. And then Abram started making deals with him. I said, Forgive me, Lord, but what about 45? What about 40? What about 30? What about 20? Got all the way down to 10. If there are 10 righteous people in the city, would you save the city? The Lord said, For 10 righteous people, I will save the city. Yeah, now think about this for a moment, amen. We know Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed. Yes. So uh, what yeah. does that say? That in the whole two cities, there weren't even ten righteous people. I think some of us might be, might be surprised to find out in places where we live how few righteous people live in those cities. There weren't even ten righteous people in those cities. And so the, the angels, the two angels make their way into Sodom, and, and we find out as they come in, Lot is sitting at the gate. Why is that important? Because typically only leaders sat at the gate mm -hmm. of the city. Mm -hmm. And so that not only does Lot have money, but Lot also has influence. He has a position of power. See, he had gotten ingrained into the fabric of the city. And think about this for a moment. Lot 
came with Abraham. Abraham set up altars. Amen. When the Lord would bless him here or tell him something, Abraham would set up altars and worship the Lord. Lot was right there. Lot knew. Lot grew up, amen, knowing about the God of Abraham. He knew. And yet and still, he goes into Sodom and he just gets ingrained into the culture. My Lord. That has to let you know, amen, just because your mom, your dad, your grandma, your relative, yeah, they serve the Lord, but what about you? Amen. Young people, I'm not saying young people, I'm not just talking about those who are younger than 25, amen, because sometimes young people in their 30s or 40s, amen, if your mom and dad are still around, you are not going to live off their salvation. You have to make that choice for yourself. And so Lot grew up and he knew, he knew, but yet still he finds himself in the midst of a wicked city that doesn't even have 10 righteous people. But he's thriving, amen. He got money, he got position, probably got a nice house. And the and the two angels come and they tell, they tell Lot, amen, uh, we coming to see you. And so Lot says, Oh, come, come, come into my house, come into my house. And so the angels go into Lot's house. And, and the wickedness of the city is such that immediately yeah. his house is surrounded yeah. by all kinds of lewd men yeah. who want to do perverted things to his guests. Yeah. Jesus. The wickedness of the city. And then Lot says something that makes you shake your head if you're yeah. a parent, especially if you're a father. Yes. He says, don't do anything to these men. I have two daughters. You can have your way with them, but leave these men alone. And you have to ask yourself, why would Lot say that? Some commentators say he was banking on the fact that those men weren't interested in women, so they wouldn't want his daughters anyway. Wow. Wow. I'm a dad. I'm not counting on that, amen? I'm not counting on that. So I don't know what Lot was thinking. I know that he thought it. He said it. Take my daughters. And what it says to me was, he started out on the outskirts of evilness, but now evilness was in his heart. And isn't this something? Because Peter yet says that Lot was a righteous man. You look at 2 Peter, it says that Lot was righteous. But still, here he is in the middle of, of all this wickedness. And how many of you know that you can still be a good person? You can still love the Lord. But if you put yourself and immerse yourself in wickedness, you are going to be tainted. Some of those things and processes that seem normal are going to start seeming normal to you. That's why we can't mess around with this stuff. He says, take my, my daughters. And then the men wanted to tear him apart. And so the angels had to bring Lot back into the house. <laughs> and then the angels struck those men blind. <laughs> And because they were stuck blind, they couldn't feel the door anymore. They said they just, they just went away from, from the house. Why are you telling me all this? Because it's now that we start getting into Lot's wife. Because the angels tell Lot, we're going to destroy this place. And you need to prepare to get out of this city. And do you know what the scripture said? Because I know, I know Lot's wife gets a lot of grief, but the scripture said that, that Lot lingered too. He lingered. Because they woke up in the morning and the angels had to urge him to go quickly. He said, come on now, we got to move fast unless you get caught up in the coming destruction. And it says that Lot lingered. Why would he linger if he knows the city is about to be destroyed? Because Lot knew something. I got it good here. Jesus. I'm rich. I got a nice house. And I have a position of authority in the city. 
And you're asking me to leave, and the angel said, we're going to destroy this place. And he, and, and Lot's lingering, and the scripture says that the angel grabbed his hand, grabbed his wife's hand, and the other two angels grabbed the hands of their daughters, but they were all lingering. Nobody wanted to leave. And we find that amazing. Say, how could you not want to leave wickedness? <laughs> and we say that until we think of that bad habit that we have right now. <laughs> how come we ain't leaving that wickedness? How come we holding on to that and lingering over that? It happens. And so the angels grab them by the hand and takes them out of the city. And the angels have two simple commands, directions. Run for your life <laughs> and don't look back. That's it. That's it. That's good. Run for your life and don't look back. And they're running, and they're running. And then as they're running, and they're outside the city, fire and brimstone comes raining down from heaven mm. and destroys everything in the city. Burns up everything. And as they're running, and as they're running, amen, the scriptures say something. And Lot's wife looked back and was turned into a pillar of song. This is what Jesus is telling us to remember, amen? Yes. That Lot's wife looked back and lost her life. Wow. Why did she look back? I love people who say they know, because the Bible doesn't say why she looked back. <laughs> well, I know why she looked back. <laughs> I know she looked back. But I can't tell you I know for sure why she looked back. Maybe, maybe she looked back because she was just concerned about some family and friends that were, that were back there. Lot's daughters were engaged. It does say that they're husbands, but when, when, but, but, but when Lot was offering up his daughters, he said that they knew no man, so that had to be, they had to be engaged. And not yet married unless something was wrong. Mm. Maybe she was thinking about her future sons-in-law. Maybe she was thinking about her neighbors and her best friends. The ones she used to go to the beauty parlor with. <laughs> Maybe she was looking back at that beautiful mansion her and Lot had. And all the possessions and the stuff. Wow. And she's looking back. I don't know, but one thing I do know is that she looked back. Mm. But maybe she looked back because as she was running to the place where God was bringing her, she saw nothing but a life of uncertainty. Wow. Where am I going? Wow. What are we going to do now? Wow. Where are we going to live? How are you going to make your living, Ma? She saw nothing but uncertainty, and at least behind her, there was something familiar that she knew. Wow. Yeah, God is bringing me out. Yes, God has delivered me. God came to my house personally, sent two angels personally to my house to deliver me and save me with a miraculous deliverance, but I see nothing in my future. What now, Lord? And as she looks and sees nothing, she looks back and says, well, at least I know that back there I got it. Jesus. Ooh. And she turns into a pillar of salt. And God says to us today, remember Lot's wife. Why? Because for every last one of us, amen, if you're saying God has called you out of his darkness into his marvelous light, out of darkness into his marvelous light, praise God for that, you're saved. But how many of you know, amen, God is still calling you to different places, to deeper levels, to higher levels in him, to doing different things in him, serving over here, doing these kind of things. And what are you doing as God calls you? 
And when you look at the call that God has for your life and you don't know exactly where it's going to lead, what do you do then? Do you keep your eyes straight like Jesus did and then your face like flint and you just keep on going with God? Wow. Or do you stop and take a look back at how your life used to be? Wasn't that the problem of the children of Israel? Amen. Mm -hmm. They got delivered from Egypt. And then the minute some adversity came, yes, yeah, a little dry in the desert, little dry. What did they start doing? They said, I remember mm -hmm. the garlic and the leeks and the onions and the fish yeah. that we used to eat back in Egypt. I know what I'm going, what we're going to do. Let's, let's appoint us a captain to bring us back oh my God. to Egypt. Isn't it amazing? God delivers you. And because you run into some adversity, because you run into some uncertainty, you immediately start thinking, you know what? It wasn't so bad back then. The devil is a lie, amen? If God delivered you from that thing, that thing was no good for you. So how many of us have been called out of some mess. Jesus. Oh, that job you had was a mess. There were people stabbing you in your back and they were after you and they delivered you from it and here you are wanting to go remember Lot's wife. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of those friends, amen, you grew up with around the way and everything else and you done moved on and God has blessed you and promoted you and elevated you and then on some lonely Saturday night you start wondering what they doing. Remember Lot's wife. God has brought you out of the mess. He, he's brought you to the place where you can enjoy the joy of his salvation. Yes. Don't go back to your old life. There's nothing for you there. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Jesus, help me, Lord. If God has separated you from some bad habits or for some bad people, don't go back to the way you used to be. I know sometimes people in the church joke, I haven't always been saved. Why are you concerned about that? You're saved now. Then you tell me what you used to do before you got saved. How you would pull out a knife and how you would do this. Why are you thinking such nonsense? Remember last why? God delivered you from that. Glory. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. God delivered you from some people. You know. Yeah, I know you know them, but if you start to think, you really know they do more to pull you down than to lift you up. Amen. You don't need to be around those people. Yes. And yes. just because they're familiar, just because you know their name and they know your name, if God has brought you to a new circle of friends who build you up and edify you, encourage you, pray for you, correct you when you need it, don't be looking back for those other folks. Remember Lot's wife. Yes. God has done some amazing things for you. Amen. Scripture says what? God has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Be glad in your salvation. Be glad in your deliverance. Be glad that you now have a renewed mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The New Living Translation says, be ye transformed by changing the way you think. You don't think the same way anymore. People used to do stuff to you before. Do you want to get them back? You thought about revenge. Wow. You thought about all kinds of crazy stuff. You don't think that way anymore. Don't let adversity or challenges or uncertainty in your life now get you longing for how you used to think. Mm. Going back to those old thoughts. Oh, nothing ever is going to work out. Mm. Oh, good, bad things come in threes. <laughs> Who told you such nonsense? <laughs> I mean, really, though, we just start thinking some crazy stuff. Yes. If you really think about it, we can say some crazy things and this world is filled with craziness. And we grow up with the crazy.
craziness. I'm scared to step on a crack on the sidewalk. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Talk about black cats and Friday the 13th. Is it somehow that takes away the grace that is upon your life? Stop wow. thinking such nonsense. Remember Lot's wife. God has brought you to a higher level of thinking and operating. How? How do you respond to adversity? Disappointments, hurts, betrayals, amen? All kinds of things. Yeah, you used to respond a certain way, but God has taught you now how to be patient, how to endure affliction, amen? He's taught you these things. Don't go back to those old ways of doing things. And I know when Jesus said, remember last night, he was giving it in the context of, of that end age when the kingdom comes and, and he comes and he takes up his people and says, listen, don't go in the house and don't come out in the field going, remember last wife. And yes, that word is for then, but I'm telling you, it's also for right here, right now. Because there are some of us that are, that are being tempted to go back to some stuff that is not good for us. We're tempted to go back to some stuff that God has delivered us from. And that stuff could be people, it could be possessions, it could be the way we think, how we respond to things. I know one of the ways that I know, yeah, I think everybody here has this testimony, you know God changed you when you start responding in ways that surprise you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know God has gotten a hold of you. Because you even surprised. <laughs> I just knew I was going to do But God had a hold on you. That's good. Amen. And you changed. And you realized there is something to this walking with God. He is taking me from glory to glory. I am going from faith to faith. I am being built up. Amen. Grace upon grace. Things are happening in my life. I am transformed. And the thing the devil wants the most, he wants to drag you back to the thing that was no good for you in the first place. And he knows the allure of it is the familiar. Mm. Hey, man. What's up, man? What's up, darling? When you gonna come around the way? I ain't seen you for a while. You just have to be passing through, you know, because you just went to the church meeting over there, or you, you did some volunteer work somewhere. Hey, man, we need to get together. Oh, no, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> oh, oh, we don't need to get together. We need to catch up. No, we don't. No, we don't. If I catch up, I'm going to get caught. That's good word. <laughs> God has delivered you. And all of us, God has delivered us from some stuff. Yeah, you say. But even after that, you know God delivered you from some stuff. You know you're not the same you used to be. Amen. You know that there's some things that you laid down. You finally, there are some things you, you laid aside, some of those, right? Those, those weights and, and all those things. You laid some of them aside. I mean, you still got some work to do, but God is still working on all of us. Yes. But you know that, praise be unto God, God has changed you. He's yeah. brought you out. He's brought you to a better place. And you can stand here today and you can say without, without, without blinking and without stuttering, amen, that, that, that God has made me better than I used to be. Yeah. I'm a better person, amen, not because of me, but because of God wow. working in me. Why in the world would you give that up? And don't be so sure to say to yourself, I'm not going to give it up. Remember Lot's wife. Why? Because she was with Lot. She knew Abraham. He's the father of the faith. Her husband was a righteous man. Wow. And she still longed for the city of sinfulness. So we can't be so so sure that we won't. That, that's the thing. You got to pray the grace of God. That Lord, help me to remain faithful 
to when you call me out because that's what it takes it takes that faithfulness and obedience to what God is saying and just like in this situation the word of God is not grievous it's not burdensome yes run for your life don't look back how many of you know God has given some of us similar command that was simple put it back <laughs> Huh? Put it back. Mm -hmm. Don't buy that. <laughs> Sometimes we have like the commandments of God, some long drawn out there. It's a simple thing. Put it back. Don't buy that. Stop looking at her like that. <laughs> amen. It's some simple stuff, amen. <laughs> some simple stuff. <laughs> Before David went to the roof, amen, God said, don't look at him like that. <laughs> he said, I'm just looking. <laughs> That's the way it always starts, amen. amen. But God has brought you out, amen. Yes, amen. Now the word says, the word does say, amen, that there's some things we shouldn't forget, right? It says that we should not forget his benefits, amen? Forget not God's benefits. We should also recall certain things to our mind, right? This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Right? It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Yeah, so we should remember some things. But there's also some things we should forget. Paul said, I forget those things that are behind me. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that were behind him were some failures in his life, some things he was ashamed of, amen. He talked about all the things he had, all his accomplishments and stuff. He said, eh, that's, that's, that's but dumb, amen. But Paul also had some things he was ashamed of in his life because he persecuted the early church. Yes, yes. But he didn't allow that to be in the forefront of his mind mm -hmm. as God had called him out now to something else. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, amen, you know, when those Corinthians were acting up and, and them folks in Galatia were acting up, that Paul started to think, you know, that, hey, Paul could even say, listen, listen, listen. I used to persecute the church now. You better not mess with me. That's how some of us do when we talk about I haven't been saved my whole life. But Paul, there's nothing in Paul's little letters that seemed to suggest he was thinking about going back to that life. He said, I forget that stuff. I forget my failures. I forget the things that I'm not proud of. How many things have you done that you're not proud of in your life? Amen. Forget that stuff. Amen? Don't look back at it because even that can trap you. Remember Lot's wife. Sometimes we think it's just the sinfulness of this or that, but sometimes it's stuff in your own life that you don't like. Don't look back at that either. Because if God has delivered you, all you, you and I have to do is keep our eye on where God is bringing us. And I understand something, amen, because I really do believe that Lot's wife looked upon the plain and she saw nothing. Because if you go back to the scripture, the, the angels told them, go up to the mountains and be safe. And I don't know if Lot was afraid of heights or what, but he immediately said, no, 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 I don't want to go up there. And he said, look, let us go over there yes. to a small village. Mm -hmm. He said, don't you see that it's small? <laughs> we'll be okay over there. And the angel said, okay, you can go. And I don't know if Lot's wife thinking that I just come from an 8,000 foot house <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. And now you're taking me to a place called Small Village. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My house was bigger than that village. Wow. I don't know if it was that. But there was something that she didn't see, that she didn't see, even though God had delivered her, she still didn't see something. And it made her long for things that she used to have and she wanted to sneak a look. Wow. And it cost her. All I would say to you is this. 
Even if you can't see right now exactly where God is leading you, God will never lead you astray. God will never lead you to the wrong place. God will always lead you to a place that is best for you. So even if you don't see it, you don't understand, you don't know what's happening, you just keep going with God and don't look back. Wow. Don't long for the life that God delivered you from. You keep going forward. Now's not the time to be turning back, giving up, lingering, looking back, and all these things reminiscing. God has a better future for you than your past. Yes. Yes. Amen. Your future is better than your past. Yes. So there is nothing back there that, that is better for you. Everything that's good for you is ahead of you as you keep following God. Amen. We're going to get ready to get out of here, but I got to say this because we have to make sure we bring this thing home, mm -hmm. right? What do I mean? Mm -hmm. I believe your testimony is similar to, to mine in this regard. Mm -hmm. I didn't always forgive people. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, that's not what I knew. Right? Before I knew God, Forgiveness for some other people did. <laughs> or you forgave just to get back to somebody's good graces or you want them to forgive you, right? right. But forgiveness was not part of mine, right? right? But God God changed you, didn't he? He taught you things like forgiveness and having compassion, right? Which means, you know, you, you feel someone's pain to the point where you're moved to do something about it. Mm -hmm. God has made you more generous than you used to be. Mm -hmm. God has made you more selfless than you used to be. God has changed your habits, right? You, you actually pick up this word and you enjoy reading it and, 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 and you pray. You didn't always read and pray. You didn't always meditate. You didn't always confess. You didn't always serve. You didn't always have a helping spirit. Amen. That, that wasn't who you were. You didn't confess the word and, and believe that because you're made in the image and likeness of God, if you speak out of a believing heart, you would have whatsoever you say. You, that wasn't, that's not how you lived. But then God got a hold of you yes. and changed you. Yes. And now, right, and now being compassionate and forgiving and generous and selfless and serving and, and helping and reading and praying and, and meditating and all these things are things that you do. And they brought you to a certain point in your life. Yes. But now you hit a roadblock. Now you hit a speed bump. Now you hit a place where you can't see what's in front of you and where you're going to end up. And something inside of you is screaming that this is not worth it. I should go back to what I was doing. Don't do it, amen. You've come too far to turn back now. Remember Lot's wife. Because if you go back to the old way you used to be, you'll regret it. Just like Lot's wife, I'm sure, with Ben, she got turned into a pillow, so she couldn't move anymore. Wow. wow. So here's the thing. Keep going with God. Keep living out the teaching that he's taught you. And when adversity comes, that's the time to dig in even more. God called Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. God was bringing a change in Lot's life. It was a dramatic change. It saved his life, but it meant something. It meant he had to break away from the way things used to be and leave them forever. Wow. The things that God has brought you from, it's forever, amen? It's one of those don't look back, don't hold on to them, keep going, amen? Your future is brighter than your past. Yes. No matter how hard it may be right now, you keep pressing forward with God. Mm -hmm. And even if you can't see a way, you can't see a way out of your situation, you can't see where this is leading into, if God 
has brought you there, then you just walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? Amen. Surround yourself with people who can encourage you to do that because Lord knows there's going to be all kinds of forces coming at you from the other side trying to tell you you need to go back in some fashion to what you used to do, yes. who you used to know, how you used to respond, yes. and all these other types of things. And none of those things are good for you. Because yes. God has brought you out of those things, and if he brought you out, it is not for you or me to go back to those things. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now's not the time to turn back. And I know things are tough, amen. As we, as we, <laughs> I always talk to people, amen, and they talk about how, how sometimes, you know, this life can be hard. You ever walk with God and find it hard sometimes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 You see, you see here's, here's part of the reason why living right is hard. And no one wants to say this. It's because sin has pleasure. Yeah. That's it. The Bible says it, amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It tells us that Moses, right? It says that he was not going to live in Pharaoh's house. He was not going to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Right? He'd rather go and deliver his people. Than, right? And, 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 right? He was not going to indulge in the pleasures of sin. What do you mean the pleasures of sin? Yeah. <laughs> feels good. If sin wasn't pleasurable, it would be easy not to do it. <laughs> but we, we try to act like it's not. <laughs> How could he want to do that? Because it felt good to him. That's why. And God knows that. I mean, that's why we look at Lot and say, why did why? Didn't they know better? But yeah, but it felt good to them. It seemed good to them. Yeah. How many things seemed good at the time, even though deep down you know this is not right? right. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, amen, I just believe this, amen, that God has not made any mistakes with you. Think of all the good things that have happened when you've obeyed God. Right? Just look back over your life and think about all the good things that have resulted when you follow God. How the channel He changed you, but He changed your family. He changed your environment. He just He just made your life better. Yes. And remember that when you get those urges to go back to your old ways. And so when I hear God say unto us today, remember last wife, what he's saying unto us in simple terms is keep pressing forward in me. Amen? Amen. Now is not the time to turn back or to give up. Amen? Amen. 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 Now is not the time. So keep pressing on in faith. I'm going to keep believing on God for good things in my life. Amen? Yes. Yes. I'm going to keep believing on God for healing and for deliverance. Amen? And and for prosperity and for increase and for wisdom to make the right decisions and, and for humility of spirit and for an obedient spirit and all those things. They're the things I want to be, amen. And just like you, sometimes I feel like giving up. People say, oh, you can't say you feel like giving up. Why not? It's the truth. <laughs> yes, sir. It's the truth. Because yes. sometimes you wonder, what is all this for? What's all this leading for? What's all this doing? Amen? Yes, yes, but I keep yes. coming back. I keep coming back. I keep coming back when, when, when the, some of the disciples walked away because Jesus said, drink my blood, eat my flesh. And that's a hard saying. And he's looked at the Peter and the rest of you going to walk away too? And Peter said, where are we going? Go. That's, I keep coming back to that. Where am I? If I'm not following God, where am I going to go? Yes. Wow. Isn't it that simple? Yes, sir. Amen. When Hagar left, the angel asked her two questions. Where did you come from? And where are you going? How many of you know it's easy to leave? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> but where are you going? You got to have a place to go. Otherwise, you're just going to be wandering around. I'm sorry. I got a shepherd who will lead me. Why should I wander? Amen. Amen. Why should I wander? I got a shepherd who will lead me. I'm staying with God, and I'm encouraging you to stay with God. I mean, don't turn back now. As hard as it may be, now is not the time to turn back. Amen. Amen. If you do, 
Be tempted. Yeah, Jesus, amen. We had it in our scripture bulletin. It's an easy scripture to remember. What's the three words? Remember the last one. Remember the last one. Let's rest on our feet and pray today. Amen. Remember the last one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you and we praise you today. We thank you, God, that you're mindful of us. You're mindful of where we are, the things that we're going through, the challenges that are before us. You're mindful, oh God, when we get weary in our spirit and challenged in our resolve. And Father, we just thank you, God that you speak a word unto us in season. Yes. And Father, we needed to hear the word today. Yes. That we may be encouraged in our spirit to continue pressing onward yes. with you, O God. God. Yes. Father God, we thank you, God, that you have called us to a higher place. Yes. You have called us, O God, to a greater place. And Father God, even though, Lord, as we go forward with you, God, that there are times where we don't know what all this is for or what it's leading unto, Father, help us just help continue us, to press forward yeah, yeah. in you, O oh God. Yeah. Father, now is not the time yeah, to turn yeah. back. But, Father, we set our faces, O oh God, to keep walking with you, O oh God, yeah. in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. But, Father, we ask you, O oh God, to increase our faith. As, Father, as we go forward, O oh God, facing more and more adversity, more and more challenges, O oh God, we ask you to increase our faith. Yes. Help us, O oh God, to Help walk us. by faith and not by sight. Help us, O oh God, to hear your voice and immediately obey when you tell us to go to the right or to the left. Help us, O oh God, to not turn back and to not look back, not even yes. to linger, O oh God, for a minute, O oh God, thinking that what you have delivered us from is somehow better than what you have yes. in front of us. Yes. Father, tell us, O oh God, and remind us, O oh God, that the best truly is yet yes. to come. And Father, as you do that, God, we just give your name the praise right now. We thank you, God, hallelujah, that we won't turn back, that we will not lose our faith, oh God, that we will not, oh God, go back to what we used to do, what we used to think, oh God. But Father God, we will be transformed continually as we look to you and you renew our minds by your word and by your spirit. Father, I thank you right now that everybody under the sound of my voice, oh God, that you are calling them at this very hour. You are calling them to their next place in you. Father, it's my prayer in the name of Jesus that everyone will immediately follow behind, oh God, you as you lead them to their place of victory, as you lead them to their place of deliverance. And Father, I thank you right now, hallelujah, that the best truly is yet to come for your people as we continue to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God that is on our lives. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we lift you up, and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.